Real YouTubists have a shirt with a zipper on the shirt. Hello. It's your boy. The guy whose camera hasn't finished warming up. I'm actually having a lot of problems with my camera. Anyway, this is my zipper shirt. I like it because it has a zipper on it. Um, so, there I was, thinking about which video I wanted to make today. Um, and I thought about this video that I'd come across somewhat recently. It's called, uh, how to beat, or can you beat, sorry, can you beat Pokemon Platinum without taking damage? Uh, and I, th I was like, I'm actually really interested in this concept. Um, it's by a YouTuber named Small, oh, sorry, <laughs> excuse me, a YouTubist named Small Ant. Um, I've seen some of his stuff before, and overall, like, I've been really impressed with what I've seen. I feel like he has really cool content, so, um... The concept of this video is really cool. Uh, obviously, like, whether or not you can beat a game is relatively easy. Like, Pokemon is not a super hard game, but this specific kind of challenge, to me at least, is very interesting. Um, and I'm really curious to see how he goes about this and if there's any kind of, like, specific strategies, if it's just, like, leveling, or if you, like, it's one of those things where, like, you specifically um, try to, I don't know, like, accomplish certain um like milestones or like like i don't know exploits or stuff this is also a challenge that i would consider doing myself the can you beat a pokemon game without taking any damage um so yeah with all that being said i kind of just want to share it with you guys i think i've watched this before but not for a while so i don't remember like a lot of what happens or what he does I, but i'm fairly certain i've seen this before but yeah it's been so long i think since i've watched this or maybe it even hasn't been that long but i don't remember much truthfully so yeah let's just go ahead and get started here and, and watch this one together pokemon Flat came out in 2008. I played a ton of it as a kid. Gen 4 is probably the one I put the most hours into. That's probably true for me as well, just for the record. Um, yeah, like, Platinum and Emerald are probably my two most play played games ever, and honestly, Platinum's probably number one. So I, was, I, I like that he's doing Platinum as well. I wanted to replay it recently for nostalgia, you know? Yep. But it's Pokemon. If you've played it once, there really isn't much reason to play through again. He's so not wrong. <laughs> so I made it a bit more interesting. I tried to beat Pokemon Platinum without ever having my Pokemon take any damage. It's really cool. Here's how it went. It's super cool. I named cool. myself Ant, and the rival was the man, of course, and walked over to get my first Pokemon from Rowan. I chose Piplup. It starts with Pound instead of Tackle, which is great because it has 100% accuracy instead of the 95%. I, I like this already because, yeah, it's a lot like, oh, it's so interesting. Like, it's about, um, how do I say it? It's, there's so many things you have to consider that you wouldn't normally consider. I, 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 he has multiple lives. That's the goal. He can, like, save, I think, and back up. But, yeah. ...percent accuracy that Tackle has in this generation. Then, the man wanted to fight. Just keep using withdraw, please. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's gonna be so hard. This is so funny. Yep. Took damage. <laughs> Had to reset. To not take damage fighting this Turtwig, it needs to withdraw six times in a row. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. And then there's two tackles. <laughs> I forgot. But that's so good. Yeah, I mean, I lo I like this a lot already. This is uh, this is a great video. I can like I I can already tell. Crit from Piplop. The chances of this happening are around 0.004%. So, that's I threw so low. The battle over and over for half an hour until I quit. Well, with Piplop at least. I thought about it a bit harder and it turns out Turtwig was the right choice. Fighting against Chimchar, it knows Leer instead of Withdraw as its non-attacking move. This right. means it won't make our attacks weaker each turn. This is so big brain. This is so big brain. Yeah, because that way you can you, you don't need a six or whatever it is, an eight hit KO. Um, if you, yeah, like if they're lowering your defense, you probably can get an in four or five if I had to guess. Probably four, maybe even three if you get, if you get lucky. All that needs to happen is Chimchar Leering four times in a row. Yep. Which is a one in 16 chance. That's not so Much bad. better odds. Yeah. And on the third attempt with Turtwig, I lucked out and it happened. No damage rival battle. Leer again? Leer again! Let's go! Yes! We're through! We've done it! After 40 minutes, I was finally able to make some progress. Talk to Rowan, nickname Turtwig, get some Pokeballs, and then we're free to have some fun. I can go right up to the next route, battle the first trainer who has a Starly with Quick Attack. <laughs> huh. Okay, it's time to start solving problems. What can you do to not get hit by a Starly that has a move that will always hit- I love this, dude. Like, like the, the problem-solving aspect is so good, honestly. Hit before you. Well, Turtwig literally can't. He learns no priority moves. I had to catch my own Starly. Here's how that went. Let's do it. Oh, crap. He's Growl. Thank you! I love- I love the RNG as well. One. Two. 
Dude, this makes me want to do this on stream. This makes me want to do this for, like, sword or something. I don't know. I think that'd be super sick. Creep. But it's so hard. First try. I got lucky and caught it first try. Then I accidentally pressed the power button and had to redo it all within, like, an hour. Anyways, there's Starly in the party. I, oh, I like this guy. I think he's, he's honestly a great YouTubist. He gets the, the YouTubist seal of approval. I had to train it up until it could one-hit KO the opponent's Starly with its own quick attack. A quick attack KO is guaranteed once Starly evolves and gets to level 19, so I had to do some grinding. <laughs> grinding in this challenge isn't like normal Pokemon grinding at all. To guarantee you never take damage, you need to also one-hit KO every wild Pokemon. Unfortunately, the only attacking moves that Turtwig and Starly know are Tackle. And if I use those, there's a 5% chance that they miss each time. Getting to level 19 with Starly, I'll be using enough Tackles that I'm essentially guaranteed to miss at least once. So, I needed to find an alternative to training against wild Bidoofs and Starlies. The solution? is found at night. Turns out, this route has a minor Cricketot infestation. At night, there's a 10% chance for a Cricketot to die, And at this level, the little musical bugs only have Bide and Growl. Bide takes two turns to deal damage, so as long as my Pokemon can defeat the Cricketots in two turns. This guy's brain is Gigantamaxed. Like, the, the fact that he... I love, I love, I just love the solutions he's coming up with here. But it's so tedious. Like, honestly, hats off. Like, this is a... This is... You have to have so much so much patience and so much willpower and so much self-control to do this. Because he's he hasn't even gotten past the second trainer, right? He's still on trainer number one. We're good to grind. But, of course, Starly can't do it in two turns. But Turtwig can. So, I had to train Turtwig up until it was able to one-shot the Cricketots. Then, I could switch train Starly until it could fight them. During this grinding, the chat and I decided on the full rules for the challenge. Okay. We decided that after each badge, I was able to save, and if I happened to take damage, I could reset the game back up to the previous gym. That's we fair. felt this stays true to the challenge because it's really about strategizing about how to make progress, rather than wasting my life away doing mindless grinding for hours. But as you'll see, I still wasted a huge <laughs> amount of time. Oh. I like that. I like that you can save and reset, but I also like that reset isn't broken, because I was wondering, like, why not just... You know, why not just um, save and... Oh, I'm so sorry about my hair. What's it doing? I don't know. Um, like, because otherwise you could just, like... He says that um, he needs to train so that tackle... So that quick attack will one-shot opposing um, Starly. And, like, I was like, why doesn't he just, like, save like after every encounter? But I like, I like that you get some saves, but that, like, you still don't want to lose, you know? Oh, and another thing. For mindless grinding, I sped up the game, because, again, I'm not trying to waste my life fighting Cricketots for 30 hours. After exterminating the entire Cricketot He's been at this for three hours. <laughs> That's so 19. funny. <laughs> I was ready for the first battle. I completely stomped youngster Tristan with quick attack Get and was able to Tristan. progress. It took nine in-game hours to defeat the first trainer. <laughs> yeah, the one thing about doing this on Sword is that it would take, like, way longer, because you can't speed it up, but yeah. This is gonna be a long one. In addition to Staravia, I had to train up Turtwig all the way to level 25 in this route to evolve oh and learn Mega Drain. It's the first somewhat okay grass move with- Power 20. Wait, Mega Drain is 20 base power in this game? That's so funny. percent accuracy. This took an additional 9 in-game hours. From here, I was able to move up to Jubilife, I crushed the man with Staravia, and ran over towards Orbra... And accidentally ran into this trainer. Oh, no, 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 no! Okay. Yes. <laughs> I definitely I press one if you thought he was gonna wipe out there. I definitely thought it was over. Oh my god. Uh, I definitely thought it was over. That quick attack had a one fifth chance to not <laughs> KO. By the way, I really <laughs> could not, not afford to make any more mistakes like that. With that over, I carefully navigated the route and cave to enter Orberg City and battle the first gym. I did the calculations, and my level twenty five Grottle should just barely be able to take out Rorik with Mega Drains. Go Runk, baby. He's lucky, by the way, that so in, in future games, they change sturdy so that, um, oh, wait, you guys can't see the whole screen. Let me fix that. I'm sorry. Um, that's not what I wanted. How about this? How about this? I'm sorry. I fix. I'm professional. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, I was not really not doing that uh, properly. Anyway, um, in future games, they change sturdy so that it will, if you use a, a move that would one shot a Pokemon, with Sturdy, um, then it won't one-shot anymore, and they'll survive with 1 HP. It's basically like Focus Ash as an ability. It's actually exactly like Focus Ash as, as an ability. Um, however, in this game, that's not how it works. In this game, Sturdy only stops like Explosion, which is stupid. Oh, is that even how it works? I don't even know. It was bad, whatever it was. Okay. Oko, okay. good. 
I'm actually, I guess he's like a 13 KO. level advantage. This is the one, this is the tough one. Kryn does his frail as heck, there's no way. Oh, Ko, yes! Yeah, no way. Oh, thank God, okay. Just like that, the first gym was done. I'm happy for him. Like, this is like, I feel like I'm watching a show and I'm rooting for the main character, you know what I'm saying? That's how it feels to me right now. Like, I want the main character to win, because it's so difficult, I don't know. It's like, and it's such a cool concept. Anyway, yeah, so now I get to save, which is a big deal. I like it. I made my first save point and I was ready to move on to Floraroma Town. This was where I made the discovery that made this challenge. Oh a god, lot more double battles, right. Team up battles. Oh. In battles, you're forced to team up with someone else. <laughs> the people who you're teamed up with kinda suck. <laughs> the first required team battle is with Dawn. You need spread moves. Runs. These grunts have a Glamio and a Stunky. The Glamio Not a Stunky. Up. The only option is to quick attack to outspeed the Glamio, as priority moves in this game all have the same level of priority. Wait, what? They do? Oh my god, that's insane. And hope the Stunky doesn't hit me. No matter what I do, it's essentially a 50-50 chance of getting hit. So I quick attack the Glamiel, which I miscalculated and it didn't even take it out. But the Glamiel and Stunky both attack the Piplup, enabling me to finish this battle first try. He's very, also very lucky that the Piplup, that um, battle, it the Piplup KO'd the Stur- the, uh, Stur- Glamiel. Whatever. It was clear my Pokemon needed to be stronger. Yeah, he so had to be able to one-shot things. Into level 32, so it evolved and learned Earthquake. <laughs> it's really funny to me that he's Torterra and like it's <laughs> he has Torterra and it's like oh uh, he's beaten one gym. Then went to Floraroma Town. Valley Windworks was next, and inside was Commander Mars. Her ah. ace is a level 17. Fake out Perugly. It has fake out. To outspeed and one-hit KO the Perugly with quick attack, my Staravia needed to evolve and then get to level 40. Ah! Only have <laughs> the funniest thing about this to me is, like, obviously in Pokemon, like, how much experience you get depends on the level of the Pokemon you play against. So, like, you can't just... Like, it's... it's Even grinding to high levels is hard enough at the... Like, once you've beaten the game, right? And In games like this. But if you think about, like... He's play he's not playing against high level opponents. You know, he's not playing against high level wild Pokemon. The wild Pokemon are so much lower than him that it's gonna take like this guy has so much patience, it's amazing. I don't know, I don't know if I could do something like this. I had the first badge. I grinded against level ten wild Pokemon. He's twenty levels above them and he still needs eleven on his Staravia. Until I took damage, because I'm dumb. And that team up battle that I did first try earlier <laughs> took three tries to get past again. Then <laughs> grinded for another two and a half hours until <laughs> the Raptor was finally a level forty. <laughs> and I could defeat a level 17 Perugly. After saving Valley Windworks, I was able to move up into a turn of forest. Oh my and, god, oh those trainers are so god, scary. more team up battles. He needs In spread, dude. Like, I, like, to be fair, there's not that much you could do. I don't think, I, I don't know if Torterra learns Earthquake by level up. I guess that's something you could do is like, pray for, like just grind Torterra until it gets Earthquake and then just KO your partner and KO everything else as well. But yeah, that's, that's a drag. First, you are forced to team up with Cheryl. The first required battle in the turn of forest is against Jack. Oh, he has Rihanna. a quick. He has Rihanna a quick. has a Pachirisu with, oh, with quick, quick attack. attack. Oh no! So I went into it hoping for the best, and I got hit. So I went all the way back to. That's actually so unfortunate. Like, there's no spread priority move. He couldn't do anything. That's so unfortunate, honestly. Oh no! He grinded for so much. For the first oh gym. god! I did three hours of grinding, ah. time, catching a Bidoof for HMs, and finding a diseased Very weasel. Nice. No. Wait, no. No. <laughs> he killed it. Oh, I, I, what would you do? If you were in that position, would you would you risk it all? Would you risk your run? I would not. I would KO that thing in a heartbeat. But wow, good for him. He didn't even really hesitate. He, like, hesitated just enough to make sure that what he was about to do was what he wanted to do, and then he just... <laughs> Goodbye, Weasel. <laughs> I put it out of its misery, of course. Then, I tried the fight again. Oh, this time he's just not messing around with quick attack. I'm just gonna hope Warple doesn't do I agree. Warple's, I guess, less scary. Egg bomb! Oh, cool. No? String shot, yeah. String shot! Yeah. Let's go! Yeah. Go! Yes! That was smart. <sighs> Alright. Oh, what if it All had poison right. points and then poisoned him? Can you imagine? I don't know if that would work that way in this game, but that'd be scary. Finally! We're good now. And I succeeded. Because Ariel is contact. The first required battle of the forest. Keyword. Oh first. no. Fortunately, though, the other battles I was able oh, to Oh, you can fight one on one. Yep. So they this is actually so big brain. I, I really, I don't know. I think this stuff is so interesting because it's so creative the way that you like have to actually like approach this. You know, I think it's super interesting. They weren't a problem. And I was able to cast aside the Blight of Cheryl. Eternity City is the location of the He picked a rough game. one to, to, to play because like. 
that I felt like the team up battles were like a specifically a thing in this generation. Like I don't think they were as much a thing in other generations, especially this one. And because I had a level forty Staraptor, <laughs> I completely blew it away with a wing attack. Goodbye, Cherim. The second badge was mine after thirty-three and a half in-game hours, not including the time spent in the resets, by the way. <laughs> after the gym, I went back and caught a Buizel for later. Seventy-five percent chance. That was smart that he waited, because yeah, now he gets to save. One, two. Three. Let's, go. Let's go. Let's go. Easily cleared out the galactic base, grabbed a bike, and the explorer kit. I oh, heck yeah. Dude, the explorer kit. I, I hope they bring back underground. That was so fun. Press underground if you remember the underground. Real underground, just to remember. Through to hard home, with a few uneventful battles along the way. The next big hurdle was badge three from Fantina, the ghost gym leader. He can't Fantina quick attack. Has a dust skull with shadow peak, a priority move. Then uh. a haunter with sucker punch. Also, uh, the priority move. <laughs> the Duskull was simple to deal with because Shadow Sneak couldn't hit my Staraptor, but the Haunter was trouble. Sucker Punch was able to hit my Staraptor, and Quick Attack couldn't hit the Haunter. So in order to beat the Haunter, I needed to train my Buizel to level 45 so oh it evolved God. and had He's level 42 playing as level 19s. This guy is dedicated. ...stats to defeat the Haunter with a single Aqua Jet. Nice. The final Pokemon, Miss Magius, was a simple crunch. Crunch. And the third badge was mine after 46 in-game hours. With the third badge in the bag, this was where the challenge changed. I grabbed a gift, Eevee, but the man who gave me some incredible advice. Make sure all your attacks hit, avoid every enemy attack. <laughs> That's the strat. That's, That's the strat. That's what you gotta do. <laughs> and walked into Salacian Town. Confident oh, daycare, right. Salacian Town right. has the Pokemon daycare. The daycare is what turned this challenge from a boring, grindy mess into a fun puzzle. If you deposit Pokemon in the daycare, every step you take, your Pokemon gains one experience point. Right. So all I had to do to get level 100 Pokemon was to shove them in the daycare and bike up and down over and over until I traveled around one million tiles. And that's what I did. I threw Staraptor and Floatzel. One million tiles? I like that he says that he did it, like, without hesitation. It was like, yeah, no worries. Like, I did it. Into the daycare and off stream, biked up and down for 17 hours. Game hours. Or around eight hours with the speed up. The next stream, I was ready to crush. He spent thing. eight hours biking. I am not normally afraid of individual people. This man terrifies me. He can. This guy is someone who can do anything he wants, and it's very scary. Eight hours biking. He's dedicated. He's gonna complete this challenge. Or so I thought. I picked up my incredibly powerful level 100 Pokemon, swept through Route 215. Oh, he hasn't until saved. I encountered a very unexpected problem. Ace Trainer Dennis. He was an unavoidable trainer who had a Drift Blim. Drift Blims have the ability Aftermath, aftermath. where oh. when the Pokemon is defeated, if the opposing Pokemon made contact, yeah, it takes damage. Have contact. This was a problem. My two level 100s only had moves that made contact. Yeah. We scoured the game and strategized the best we could, and the best solution to the problem, barring extra hours and hours of grinding, Oh no! Teaching it to Floatzel. Oh no. Therefore, Rock Tomb only has 80% accuracy. It was a 1 in 5 chance that I would take damage. Oh no. A 1 in 5 chance I would have to spend 8 more hours of my life biking up and down. Here's the battle. No. No! <laughs> oh no! I can't even imagine how demoralizing that would be. Can you imagine spending eight hours off stream biking? And then you play Drift Limb level 25 with your level 100? He needs like the protective pads or something. That's a joke, they don't exist in this game and also it's a bad item. Just one closer to 69, baby. Uh, I should have probably just done some extra grinding on my Torterra. Yeah, I was gonna say, that, that's, that's another I option. Reset. And since I'm stubborn, I just tried the Rock Tomb strategy again. No, 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 no! Okay. Can yes. you imagine, though, if it missed twice? Oh, my God. He's oh, almost 30 hours in. it happen twice? Let's go! <laughs> so oh that was my a God. fun way to waste eight hours. With that fight complete, I moved on to the fourth gym. Swept the whole thing easily and saved the game. 73 hours in. <laughs> Next up was <laughs> a quick battle against some Galactic Grunts. With Dawn. The grunts open with two Zubats. Get Surf or something, come on! So I can't Earthquake them with Torterra. I was a bit reckless here because I had just finished a gym, so I decided to test my luck, taking them on without any strategy. Yep. I had to reset a few times until... I mean, why not? You can reset at this point. Nice. 
This was the moment Chat and I decided to never make a single mistake ever again. I'm so certainly we came ambitious. Up with a foolproof plan to defeat the Zubats. I walked down to Pastoria City, went to the move reminder, and taught Floatzel Swap. Ah, nice. There we go. Double battles. And never misses. That's very that's very valuable. I love the strategy here. With this excellent idea, I was able to defeat the grunts without having to You know, I was I was bashing on Floatzel at some point recently, I think on the Ash video. Um however, I like seeing it's actually like really it's actually really strong here because yeah it's super fast it's early game and it gets Aqua Jet which is like a water type priority move which means only like Gastron has an immunity and Gastron doesn't have any priority moves or like a couple others as well but for the most part yeah um, I think it gets Quick Attack as well and he also yeah has spread has a spread move that you can actually learn which is good let's go Floatzel. I on good luck the fifth gym was up next and it was easy just Aerial Ace Crash Awakes Gyarados Quick Attack the Floatzel as it had Aqua Jet and Aerial Ace the Quagsire nice five badges down three to go. Before the 6th gym, I did have to run a few errands, like delivering the old charm to Cynthia's grandma in Celestic Town. I traveled through the foggy area on Route 210, and accidentally got into a battle. Oh no. Of course, I had also forgot to use defog, so I was going into the battle oh, no. with a 40% chance to miss each attack. Fo Can we talk about how annoying fog was in Gen 4? Like, that was probably my least favorite part of of Gen 4, in, like, overall, but maybe out of any Pokemon game. Like, I have vivid memories of a child, like, as a child, just, like... Long battles with nothing hitting. Fortunately, I had Aerial Ace for Scyther. Oh no, it's quick Scyther attack. New quick attack, so I had to use my own quick attack. Nice. It hit. I was lucky. <laughs> Next was a Luxio, which I was able to take out with an Aerial Ace. The final Pokemon was the worst case scenario. Oh, Probo geez. Pass. Both Swift and Aerial Ace would not take it out in yeah, one hit. Yeah, it's so bulky because it's four happens. times resist. Don't oh, no. miss. Oh no. No. No, no. Okay. His odds are even worse. Okay. Can you imagine? Ah! This is like so... No I can't even imagine doing this. Maybe I shouldn't do this. I don't think this would be good for me. Um, yeah. Like, that. Like I'm nervous watching this. I can't even imagine doing it. Ah! <laughs> ah! <laughs> oh, that was lucky. The rest of the route, I smartened up and used Defog, so it was stress-free. I destroyed Cyrus in the runes, snagged Surf, and made my way to Candelab City. The man was waiting for me, so I Aqua Jet the Staraptor and Infernape, Aerial Aces Rose Raid and Heracross, and Quick Attack the Floatzel. Nice. Easy. Before the gym, I paid a visit to Iron Island to see Riley, to get the HM for I forgot about Riley. have to talk to Riley. The thing is, all of the Iron Island battles are dreaded team battles. Fortunately, though, Riley just hands strength to you right at the start and waits for you inside. So, I <laughs> abandoned him and. <laughs> Poor Riley, he's just gonna be like standing there forever. He waited 80 hours, 80 in-game hours for Ant to show up, and then he just peaced out. Poor guy. Went right back to Candelab for the gym. The gym was fairly straightforward. I did need to pick up a Mystic Water in Pastoria, though. I was wondering when items were going to come into play here, because he hasn't really needed them yet. Like, for example, I like I expected maybe a Lumberry on one of his Pokemon. Uh, I thought that could be good, because in case he gets, like, random poison to, like, Poison Point. Because we already know that contact moves have been an issue. Um... Yeah, so I thought that maybe, like, Lumberry could be good, or, yeah, like, that would have helped him versus Thunder Wave as well, but, yeah, I mean, he's got a level 100 Pokemon, so he, he probably, I mean, honestly, he probably knows better than I do, let's be completely honest. To ensure an Aqua Jet KO on a Scizor, that new Quick Attack. Nice. Other than that, though, it was a clean Surf Sweep for the Scizor. There's so many sturdy Pokemon in this game, and every time I see one, I have, like, a moment where I'm like, oh, God, like, he's not gonna be able to one-shot. I don't even know what you do versus a sturdy Pokemon in this challenge. Like, maybe you have, like, a Boma Snow and have Hail, like, break the sturdy? I don't know. Or like a multi-hit move, but it's very hard to one-hit Bastion on even with multi-hit. the badge. Team Galactic started causing some <gasps> chaos, so I Excuse went to me. Lake Valor, cleaned things up there, then Lake Verity because Dawn couldn't handle it herself, <laughs> and up towards Snowpoint, Dawn. Lake Acuity, uh, where it's hailing. But that's okay, because I had a way to deal with it. Remember the Eevee I picked up? By walking just barely into the hail on Route 217, uh. <laughs> and using Rare Candy on Eevee. <clears throat> It evolved into Glaceon. Let's go. Pokemon immune to the effects of hail. Let's go but Glaceon. It's still weak. And How come he's using only Pokemon I was, I was trashing on? Torterra, Glaceon, and Floatzel are all Pokemon I have been trashing on on the channel, and they're all doing and work. And it doesn't learn any good ice type moves, so I chucked it and Torterra into the daycare to make them strong. No, is he gonna do the eight only million more sets? ice type move with 100% accuracy in this <laughs> is Ice Beam. <laughs> fire Ice Beam. You have to spend 10,000 game corner coins. 10,000 game corner coins cost 200,000 Poke dollars. And I was completely broke after spending all of my money on the daycare. So, I came up with a get-rich-quick scheme. Make Staraptor hold a luck incense, walk up to some snobby rich kids, and beat them up repeatedly with the first seeker until the entirety of their parents' wealth is securely in my pocket. Then I'm... 
I, my, one of my favorite things about this is that he's using so many different like aspects of the game right he played the game corner he's like getting like dollars he's using items now he's abusing like the daycare you know he's thinking about tms i don't know he's i don't know i think like it's cool how like i feel like he's really using every resource he has available which i just think is neat i think it's a really cool way of playing the game i blew it all on a single tm with that done, it was just a matter of running up and down for another eight hours. It has Blizzard. I mean, in theory, Blizzard, Blizzard never misses in hail, so in theory, like, you could just do that, but, yeah. Once Glaceon and Torterra were level 100, I was He's ready 30 to take on in. the Blizzard. I taught Glaceon Ice Beam and Shadow Ball, and went to the Move Reminder to get Ice Shard. Nice. The battles for Route 217 were straightforwards. I Shard the Pokemon with priority moves, Shadow Ball the Pokemon resistant to ice, and Ice Beam the rest. Snow Point City Gym was not as easy. The first issue was the puzzle oh. itself. A few of the trainers in the gym have Snovers, then Sneasels. Snovers set up Hail with the Snow Warning ability, and in Gen 4, weather effects last indefinitely. Right. Then the so then Sneasel will have a priority move so that, yeah, he would have to switch. Is he playing on set, I guess, so he can't switch? I don't know. Sneasels have a quick attack, forcing my Glaceon to stay in and use a priority move. The thing with this is that Ice Shard or Quick Attack both don't do enough to KO a Sneasel. That's so, so dumb. It's level 100. I had to find a path through the gym that avoided all trainers to not risk getting into one of these Snover Sneasel fights. It took a while, but after looking at a map of the gym for nearly 15 minutes, <laughs> Chad and I were able to find a route skipping all of the trainers in the gym while solving the puzzle. Of course, that wasn't the only difficulty in the gym. We still had Candace. Candace right. opens with a Sneasel, which was simple. Since yeah, it wasn't fine. hailing yet, we're able to outspeed its quick attack with Aqua Jet for the knockout. But Pokemon 2 is where things get more complicated. If Candace sends out a Bomb of Snow next, it starts hailing with Snow War Right, okay. Warning. A Sorry, Bomb of Snow itself can be taken out easily with Glaceon's Ice Beam and the Pillow Swine that follows it. But the reason that hail is a problem... Snow Cloak. He has to deal with Snow Cloak. Oh no. It's because of Frostlass oh, and no. its ability. Snow Cloak. Snow Cloak in hail makes moves miss one fifth of the time to guarantee the KO, <laughs> I need to move on Glaceon. Come on, Glaceon! Never misses. And as you can clearly see, Glaceon doesn't have one of those no miss moves. Wait, it does. Well, except it does. Yep. The hail here that causes the accuracy issue also solves it. As it turns out, Blizzard bypasses the accuracy check while hailing. So yep. I was able to Blizzard with 100% confidence and take out the Frost Lash. I really thought this this was about to be a a, a stop because of Snow Cloak. I really did. Nabbing me the seventh badge. I dealt with the Lake Acuity stuff, then wiped out the Galactic Headquarters, getting the Master Ball from Cyrus along the way, and headed up to Spear Pillar for the end of the world. Oh, you thought I was talking about the whole portal thing? No, it, it's another team battle. <laughs> for real though, this one was surprisingly easy. None of the opposing Pokemon, no priority moves. Yeah, I mentioned Surf earlier, but like, yeah, Surf is super strong here. So Floatzel was able to Surf, Come instantly on, drowning everything on the field. I hopped into another dimension real quick and caught Giratina with the Master Ball. Nice. It wasn't quite as strong as I needed it to be, so I biked up and down for two hours until it was level 66. I also beat up the rich kids again for money, for some stat boosting Oof. items, and nice, a nice. few TMs I'll explain later. Then, I was able to move through route... He's 33 hours in. This guy has so much dedication. That's amazing. 22. Only fighting a single trainer with a Wingle. Alright, Kuro level 100. Should just absolutely crush... With the aerial laces. No, 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 quick attack, quick attack. Yep. No! Which I forgot had quick attack. Yep. You can't blame him, to be honest, because he's 34 hours in. That's the thing. I never do anything. I, I, like, if you do anything for 34 hours without making a mistake, you're honestly insane. I mean, he's made a couple mistakes, sure, but, like, yeah, no. Yeah, like, I don't blame him for that. So, I reset and got everything all over again. When That's I returned to the wing, 37 I hours. I remembered it had quick attack this time. Now, on to the final gym. The opposing Pokemon are now getting to the levels where every battle needs to be meticulously planned out. Quick Attack the Jolteon with Staraptor to yep. outspeed its own Quick Attack, Earth Power the Raichu with Giratina, Surf the Luxray with uh -huh. Floatzel, and with a Silk Scarf on Staraptor, Quick Let's Attack the Electivire. The I guess what's getting hard is like, so what he did to kind of bypass a lot of the strategy and like, or like bypass a lot of the fights was he just got a super strong priority attack. Or like priority attacks in general are relatively weak, like Quick Attack is only 40 base power. Um, and it was fine, though, because he was so over-leveled compared to everything else. However, now the opponents are getting actually, like, high-ish levels. Like, level 50 is nothing to scoff at. And so, he's probably going to be getting, like, close to the point where, like, his quick attacks won't be Oakoing stuff anymore. Eighth badge. From here, it was a quick jog through Victory Road and a simple rival battle before the Elite Four gauntlet. I taught my team some important TMs, leveled up Giratina one last time to restore balance, and went in. No going back now. He's so close. The start of the Aaron battle was simple. Aerial Ace is Yon Mega, mm -hmm. Earthquake to Drapion, mm -hmm. Aerial Ace the Vespaquen, mm -hmm. and Aerial Ace the Heracross. The Scizor, though, was trouble. 
Sizzle or new quick attack. Right. And it had enough defense where my own quick attack or aqua jet couldn't take it out. I guess that's why he has Giratina. no priority moves that could defeat it in one shot. So, my solution was Giratina. Oh my god! Effective. He's gonna use Natural Gift. One of my favorite Pokemon sets of all time is Natural Gift Scissor with Aqua Berry. It's never- it's not good. Basically, the way that Natural Gift works is if you are holding a berry, Natural Gift will consume your berry and turn it into a relatively high base power physical move, um, correlating with the berry's type. So, what that means is if you're holding an Aqua Berry, because Aqua is the fire resist berry, Natural Gift turns into like a 100 or 80 or 90 base power move, depending on the game, I think. Um... Eats the berry, and yeah, it's a fire type attack. So if you run natural gift, aqua berry, scissor, you have uh, aqua berry against opposing fire type attacks, and you have a uh, a fire type sta uh, fire type uh, physical move that you can use to hit opposing scissor. By quick attack. The problem with Giratina was that it was only level 69, and a level 69 Giratina couldn't normally defeat a scissor in one hit. Well, not without natural gift. Natural Gift is a move that oh, changes its it. typing and damage it. based on the berry that your Pokemon is holding. Give Giratina an Aka Berry, and Natural Gift becomes a 60 power He's fire type move. So I did just that, and incinerated the Scizor, winning the first battle. Let's go. Bertha was next, but with Torterra, the battle was simple. Giga drained everything except Gliscor, where you use Ice Beam with Glaceon. Flint was another simple one, surf the Houndoom, Aqua Jet the Infernape, surf the Rapidash, and, He's so Motor, close. and Aqua Jet the Flareon. Lucian was next, an easy Shadow Ball sweep, except for Espeon, where I had to quick attack with Staraptor. The final fight with Cynthia so close. was the most meticulously planned fight of them all. Glaceon's Ice Beam couldn't take out the Spear Tomb in one hit, so I had to give it an Icicle Plate to deal just enough damage. Nice. Let's go. Lucario okay. had extreme speed, so I had to use Giratina. Giratina was leveled exactly to 69, and given just enough stat boost <laughs> out speed, was also given choice spec. I love that. I, I love that he's using items. That's so big brain. Like, yeah, specs Giratina is really good here. So good Earth matchup. power just barely KO'd. I made sure Glaceon had enough speed to outspeed the Garchomp to KO it and Togekiss with Ice Beam. I taught Staraptor close combat to one hit KO the Milotic. Imagine he like he forgets and he uses Brave Bird or Double Edge because they're stronger and then yeah, loses. That'd be bad. Then it was an Ice Beam onto the Roserade to finish off the challenge and beat Pokemon Platinum without taking a single hit point of damage. 138 hours, 37 minutes. That's so impressive. Not including the resets. And that's how I did it. If you enjoyed this and want to see more, make sure to subscribe. I play games wrong. I'll I really enjoyed this. I thought this was a really, really cool um, video. I think I feel like, I don't know. Um, I feel like a lot of people like play Pokemon on YouTube and I don't know, like sometimes people do fun challenges, but I think this is one of my favorite ones that I've seen. Um, it requires so much planning and so much prep and so much foresight. And I feel like he was just, I mean, I mentioned it throughout the, the video, but like, I feel like the way in which he approached it and the 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 fact that he used all the tools at his disposal i thought it was really enjoyable and a really cool way of playing the game that was super difficult but like yeah really cool so i mean if you guys want to see me do this on twitch or something i would consider it i don't know if it's possible for sword and shield um i'd have to like at least see if you can get past the first battle um but because i feel like that's like kind of after you get past the first one you can always like over level and, and maybe get things that way but um yeah i don't know i feel like i don't know i, th I just think it's super interesting um so yeah, um, I think that's it. Thanks so much for watching. I'll link the original video down below if you want to check it out. Go leave a like on that one as well if you enjoyed it. Because honestly, it's it's a great it's a great piece of uh, piece of YouTube. So um, yeah, if you guys watched the whole thing, thanks so much for watching. Uh, shout outs, small ant because that's super cool. And I'll see you next time for the next video. Goodbye.